good. Well, hey everyone, welcome to our total body reset. <laughs> My name is Skyla. We're going to get started with some active breathing. Come to any comfortable standing position. Just make sure that in that comfortable standing position, that when you bend your knees, the knees are going to go straight forward in the same direction as your toes. We're going to start with a double inhale, double exhale. Bend the knees, push the hips back. Exhale all the way first. Double inhale, adding some tension. Pull those shoulders up and hold it. And now exhale from your throat and squat down. Double body inhale. Squeeze everything up and in. Hold it. And now exhale from the throat. Now let's do it fast five times. Exhale all the way. Now very fast. Inhale. Two more. Last one. Now just come up and stand tall and notice if you already feel just a little bit warmer as a quick way to boost your vagus nerve. Let's bring the feet in so they're at the width of the pelvis bones inside the frame of your hips. As we inhale, we're sweeping those arms up and overhead, palms forward, exhale, sweep it back and around. We're keeping that rhythm for a brief, for a few breaths. This is our um, pretty traditional warm up to help to correct the upper spine posture and also get some blood pumping in your chest. Exhale, at least two or three more. Exhale from your throat, especially if you've been holding tension in your shoulders, your arms, tension in the back. If you've had to sit a lot today, relax your jaw. Last one. From here, inhale both arms straight up. Step your left foot back in casual stride and bend the right knee. From here, we're reaching up. Take your right arm, twist towards the right, lower that arm down, and then circle it down and around. Bring it forward, shaking hands with someone in front of you, and then reach it up. Inhale, straighten your right leg when you do this now. Look back with the right leg straight, bring the hand down, bend the right knee, and shift forward. Inhale up, both legs straight, big twist. Exhale, arm down, bending the knee, come forward. A few more. Inhale up, both legs straight, down and around, bring it forward. Last one. Inhale, both legs straight, and around, bring it forward. From here, step both feet in. Touch the toes together and keep a little space between the heels. As we exhale, press the palms together, draw the thumbs to the center of your chest, push your hips back, keeping the back flat or maybe feeling as if you have a little bit of sway back. If you've had to sit a lot already today, you exaggerate that swoop in your lower back and buttocks. From here, reach the hands back, palms are facing down, Imagine you're trying to reach back while your shoulders press away from the ears and lengthen your neck and head out like a turtle coming out of its shell. You want to get as much length out and open through those shoulders as possible. From here, hands go to the side, straightening the legs, just a different type of low back stretch and hamstring stretch. Relax your head and neck, shake the head yes, and then turn it left and right. Bend the knees again, come to a still point, straight from the arms. Let's prop up our spine. Arms go back. Inhale, bring it all the way up. Step the feet out to the width of the pelvis bone inside the frame of the hips. Let's take the right foot back a short stride and bend the left knee. This time we're twisting over to the left. A couple of times keeping the knee bent. Inhale, bring it up. Exhale, down and around. Let's straighten the left leg now. Inhale, both legs straight, reach. Exhale, take it down and around. Come forward, bend the left knee. Exhale, take it back and around. Inhale, both legs are straight. Take it back, bend the front knee. Come forward, a couple more. Inhale, both legs straight. Exhale, back and around. Come forward, bent knee. At least one or two more. Inhale, both legs straight. Back and around, bending the left knee. Last one, take it back, both legs straight. Press into the inner blades of the feet, bring it forward, both knees are bent. Let's step forward, toes are touching, face between the heels. From here, softening through the knees, 
bring the hands back, push the hips back. Moving into our airplane expression. From here, make sure that you feel like your body is like an airplane taking off from the runway rather than dropping down for a landing. Reaching back dynamically, open up the throat, maybe even close the eyes. Even here, we're able to feel the body working on balance. Shift into the front of your foot. Now, depending on what kind of shoe you have, that little shift forward could make your body feel a little unsteady. So just be aware that we all have a tipping point. What's a tipping point? The point at which you tip over. It's very unique for everyone. So just be aware of that. Press the shoulders away. This is a low back strengthener. This is strengthening the muscles along the sides of the spine, the pulley system that keeps our spine nice and long and lean. When you're ready, inhale both arms up and overhead. Hands come down, thumbs to the center chest. Move those thumbs over to your right armpit. Push the hips straight back without twisting too much. Just bringing those thumbs over first to the right. Now, in our twist, what we've been studying is that we want to counter the energy. As we begin to twist to the right, drawing that right shoulder back, we're pushing the left hip back. That's going to be our counter energy. Press your knees in towards each other. Keep the feet in close. Big toes are touching. It can feel a little different if you have shoes on. Look down at the floor. Exhale all the way. When you're ready, inhale straight up to center. Reach the arms up overhead. Exhale, palms come down to the chest. Begin push into your hands, hopefully countering the effect of tightening or driving. You want to add in a lot of pressure here for the sake of bone density and circulation. Let's push the hips back again. Hold it there. Bring the thumbs over to the left this time without twisting, just holding it there so that we hopefully set that left rotator cup in place. Now, as we begin to twist a little more to the left, counter that by pushing your right hip back. And in its essence, you're pressing that left shoulder down towards your left hip, giving a nice big squeeze to your left kidney. Did you know your left kidney is a little bigger than your right kidney? It is because your liver is in the way on the right side. When you're ready, bring it through center, stand straight up, big inhale. Exhale, swan dive, take it down to the thighs, flat back, lengthen out, then relax your head and neck. Shake the neck, yes. Turn it left and right. Come to a still point, bend the knees, hips press back, straightening your arms, drop up the spine, and then reverse swan dive. Bring it all the way up. Let's step our feet out so that they are wider than the hips. The width of the legs is going to be determined by your low back and your clothing, of course. So if your low back is achy at all, always adjust and take a more conservative approach to this. From here, we're lifting our left toe, swivel it out on that left heel. Let's let those arms press down to shoulder height and bend the left knee. We're going to take this down with our right hand, circle around just one or two times, and we're moving that knee, similar to what we just did in the warm-up. Bend the left knee, and now straighten the left leg. So we're coordinating the movement, upper body and lower body coordination. Hopefully, not only is this serving the body today, but this upper and lower body coordination is helping to balance the hemispheres of the brain so that we don't need too much brain work that stresses us out. Take it down, hold it down. From here, bring that right hand to your low back. Flip the left palm up. Think about wrenching your right waistline or your right shoulder towards your right hip. Keep reaching out with that left hand. Imagine you're holding on to a bowling ball. This is a little bit of a core strengthener. Option to level up on the intensity here. Keep smiling about it before you do it. Let's take the right arm up. Keep pressing your right rib towards your right hip. And now bring that arm overhead, even if just for a moment. Inhale, take it up and down. Inhale, bring it up. Keep smiling. Bring it over, reach. Crunch that right rib in towards your hip. One more. If you're starting to get warm, I promise you're doing it right. 
It's not supposed to be easy. When you're here, come up. Let's turn that left toe in. Pivot on the right foot, right toe out. Let's bend our right knee. From here, adding in those big sweeps, we're coming down with the left hand, open up, straighten the right leg, taking it down, big open expression. You're actually stretching from the inside arch of your right foot all the way to the left side of the chest. It's called a spiral line of fascia. And there are a lot of like hip issues and shoulder issues, neck issues that connect all the way down to our feet. We're gonna do one more, take it down. Let's bring the left hand to the low back, bend the right knee, option to keep that hand on the thigh. You don't have to extend the arm up if it doesn't feel right for your body. Option to have that right arm extended with the palm up. Remember to crunch at the left waistline so you're creating an active oblique contraction here. We can fold it right here. This is work. Draw that left shoulder back, push into the inner blade of your left foot, pull your left hip back away from me. Option to inhale, take that left arm up, bring it over. Imagine you're trying to hold the bowling ball, press that right arm up, take it down, Remember to smile, inhale, exaggerate the breath. Exhale, crunch your side oblique. Two more, inhale, exhale. Last one, big breath in and exhale. Let's slowly come up, turn both toes forward. We're gonna work on that counter twist again. And this was from our class on Monday to wring out the kidneys. From here, push the hips back. And if you actually put your hands down on the crease at the tops of the thighs and the belt in the pelvis, you'll know that you're doing the correct thing if you feel your bones kind of fold over when you come down. So you want your fingers to kind of be in that crease. If you don't feel a crease there, that means that you're probably bending too much from your spine, not enough from the hip and back. From here, keep lengthening out. We're taking our left hand over to the right leg. Now, what the body will do automatically is a pattern of least resistance. What the body does is this, and then it'll start to do this. So you're going to push your left hip back or press your right hip towards me. Keep both legs as straight as possible. Remember to smile. Your body is nothing but just a jungle gym. You're supposed to be having fun right now. From here, bring your right hand up onto your hip. Start to twist to the right with that left hand reaching across. You're welcome to look up over the right shoulder. This is going to be work for the neck strengthening the neck. If it's painful at all, look down past your right pinky toe. You could also look straight down to the floor. Shift the weight into the front of the foot. This is something that our body has already practiced. Again, just be mindful to feel for those dip tipping points. Inhale into the back of your left lung. So hopefully the movement of the breath in the upper lung can help set upper ribs and rotator cuff in a neutral position. One more inhale. Exhale, come to center, nice and slow. Both hands on each respective thigh. Drop your head and neck, shake it out. Relax your low back. When you're ready, slowly push into the leg. Come up, walk the feet in. Shake off the knees. All right, so this is just a hard reset before we do that twist on the other side. It is an intense twist for all different types of connecting fascia, ligaments, and tendons. All right, let's find our new position. So one really interesting thing about this particular movement is that it can feel really different on left and right. And your tighter side is not always your bad side. It is possible to have too much mobility and that's what can cause pain. So try not to over twist if it feels different. So starting with our hinge, 
We're flipping our hips back, making sure that we feel a fold over of the pelvis bone over the top of the thigh. So there is a crease in the pants and the hands can fit into that crease. The deeper that crease, the more effective the twist will probably be. From here, remember to keep lifting through your ribs like airplane pose. You want to be like an airplane taking off from the left runway. Let's take the right hand to the left side. At this point, we might keep the left hand where it is, or we could put the hand on the hip. Shifting forward, where's the tipping point? Keep pushing into the inside blade of the foot and with the equal amount of effort to the outside blade of the foot as well. There's not as much weight in your heels here. Try not to dig in. If you push into your left foot, it'll shift and lift your right hip a little bit. Push your right hip back as you start to twist to the left now. Looking over the left shoulder, reaching across with that right arm, keep shifting center of gravity forward. The body's path of leash resistance is going to be to over twist and to dig into the heel. So for us to create a little more strength and stability, we're going to resist that path of least resistance. We are creating work for the body. Keep lifting your right hip, press that right hip back, push the left hip forward. Act surprise, one, two, three, little lift of the ribs, breathe behind your right shoulder blade. Trying to reset the ribs, reset the rotator cuff with the breath. When you're ready, both hands go to the respective side. Hang loose, reset, head and neck relax. To safely come out, you can push into your thighs. Start to inch the feet in towards each other. Easy does it, not just for the body, but for our blood pressure. Shake it out. Ah, all right, how y'all feeling? All right, good. All right, from here, let's go ahead and take the feet to the width of the pelvis bone. Inhaling both arms up and overhead, working on a little bit of balance, stepping that left foot back, both legs straight. As you exhale, come forward, lower your hands. Inhale, right leg back, both arms up. Exhale forward. Inhale, left leg back, both legs straight. Bend the right knee and step it forward. Inhale, right leg back, both legs straight and forward. Let's keep that rhythm. Take it back. Inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. One more. Other side, wrapping up our set and forward. Now take a moment, roll the shoulders back and maybe allow yourself to find a gaze somewhere past your cheeks, past the tip of your nose. There, there's a, a gazing point where you're going to have both of the fields of vision converge just down on the floor somewhere. Find that one spot that is not moving for you. And while you're here, start to lift one knee at a time, keeping your foot flexed. So what can happen is this muscle in our hip can get very tight, but not strong in a lot of people. And um, also this muscle in the hip, when it's tight, because we have to sit a lot. There's also a lack of circulation. When there's a lack of active strife in this muscle, there's a lack of active like neurological connection, nerve connection. So we're trying to just actively move this hip flexor muscle, which is integral to overall bladder health um, activities for daily living, making sure that our back stays strong, now, another little test we can do to kind of see what might be going on in our brain's vestibular function, since it is a total body reset, not just for the body, talk about the nervous system too. What you're welcome to try is keep pulling that toe up, flat foot, walk like a caveman, flat foot, not like a ballerina, okay? None of this, no Barbie toe, right? What you can try is closing your eyes and march in place. This is an actual active neurological test that we will do in personal training 
Um, not so much common, I would say, in a very traditional personal training setting, as much as it is more so checking for neuromuscular and neurological health. So you're just going to march in place as much as you can. Now, keeping the eyes closed is an integral part of this test because when we open our eyes, if we see that we have twisted or turned too much to the left or right, that can mean that there are some crystals in the ears that need to be addressed. And that would regulate vertigo and proprioception. So just keep going. Four, three, two, and now just stop and look around and notice if your body did a little turn, if you started to, if you start to move forward a little bit, completely natural, completely normal. But if your body has too much rotation, that's something for us to talk about another time. Let's roll the shoulders down, relax your body, sweep the arms up, big inhale, take them back, exhale. Inhale, we're almost there y'all. Just one or two minutes to go. Last one. So we focused a lot last month on detox and an integral part of detox is of course, burning off the trash. So we work a lot with heat. Another part of detox is gonna be working with your kidneys. So to get your kidney function up, take your, my hands here, take your right hand and hold on to your thumb. And then you're gonna take your left hand straight up, your index finger, middle finger, ring finger. You're gonna press your thumb, you're gonna press these three fingers around your thumb. And then your pinky finger is just kind of hanging out off to the side. So when you lower your hands in front of you, you can see that you're holding on to your left thumb. And then you just keep pushing those index, middle finger, ring finger, push all three in towards your right thumb. And of course, that pinky finger is just hanging out. You can do it like high key if you want. Kind of go out to the side, just relax. Lower the hand, sit nice and tall. There are actual um, acupressure points. So there are neurological nervous system channels here that connect to your kidneys. And this is really important as it's starting to heat up here. So hopefully we're all drinking more water and such. Um, by the way, try to drink more bottled water or filtered water. Studies have shown that when you drink a lot of water that's not filtered, that does increase your chance of kidney stones and also bladder stones. Because so it calcifies, right? Take a look at your shower head, steps in your body. Inhale, sit nice and tall. Two more, keep pressing those three fingers into the thumb. Hold on to that right thumb with a good grip. One more. And then relax. And you are all done. That's the reset button. There you go. You're all done. Thank you for being here.